What's going on guys? Welcome to episode two of Life Skills. Um, I'm still drinking coffee, but we're only three days a week now. We're on a road trip, because I don't know if you remember, but last week I told you not to plug up a drain. Also, plug up that drain. You don't want to get hair inside the drain, then all of a sudden, I gotta make another video teaching you how to unclog a drain. I got a phone call two days ago from my mom saying that my grandmother's sink is completely destroyed. So now we're driving out to hot ass Merino Valley, 75 miles, to go fix my grandmother's sink. I blame karma personally. But either way, we're on the road. We're at Farmer Boys. We're gonna get us some breakfast. It's gonna be a good day. How's it going? Hi, how are you doing? I'm um, pretty good, dear. Let me see here. Can I get a sausage breakfast burrito, please? Okay. And what do you want, babe? Can you make that? I can't see the menu. Can you make that too, I guess? Let's make that too, actually. Okay, no problem. Any yeah, hot sauce, ketchup, or anything? Uh, can I get some hot sauce, please? Yeah, no problem. You're all set, okay? Thank, Thank you too much. Have, Have a good day. day. What, Robin? That's not for you. I don't think she even knows that we're coming. Doorbell? I don't know if it works. <laughs> oh, it does work. Hi. Hi. Oh, how are you? I'm good. I understand you have problems with your sink. Yeah. Oh, how, how are you doing? How are you? How are you? My everybody, family. this is my grandmother. Say hi to the camera. Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. <laughs> and we're going to fix her sink Brad, today. Little Brad. <laughs> All right, what did you do to this sink? Uh, it just started going falling and falling, and so before it's it fell. falling? Yeah. Yeah. And so before it fell. Grandma, there's no floor. No, right? there isn't. Should I told you? What did you do? That whole thing broke, mijito. Oh, my God. And you know what? There's no floor, there's no brackets? No, no. See, it has to be, we even have to leave the house because we're going to turn off the water. We won't be able to shower, nothing. Oh, my goodness. And they told me, three, three other people that have come to the give me estimates have told me I have to be out of the house for at least two days. They rerouted your P-trap. What is going on down here? <laughs> <laughs> That's how I had to do it. All right. Did Jerry this is this? me. Yes, they did. <laughs> no. This is me. All right. Don't worry. We're going to fix it. <laughs> you guys were not joking when you said that this sink was completely falling apart. So as you can see, there is no drain to the right side of the sink. My grandma has put duct tape around this side. There's no P-trap that exists anymore. The ground is, there's no shelf, there's no bottom floor, and the sink is being held up by cinder blocks. <laughs> We're not gonna be able to fix all of this today, but we are gonna be able to put a new bottom shelf on here and we're gonna connect both sides of this sink and replace those lines. We're gonna get the sink at least running properly. And that's gonna have to do. Cause as you can see, this is a cast iron sink and that thing is about 300 pounds. Yes. Jason, you're not lifting that by yourself. It's nope. just not gonna happen. <laughs> nope. All right, so let's get to work. All right guys, so step one, we're gonna measure the height, the width and the depth from the front, back, sides and middle. We do this because the measurements can change depending on where you're measuring from. 
make sure to write absolutely everything down. So next we're going to uninstall everything that we plan on replacing. You're going to need a crescent wrench and two medium sized clamp wrenches if you got them. We're taking off both supply lines from the sink. We're taking off the fill line that goes to the spray nozzle. We're also going to be uninstalling both valves that connect to the wall as well as the entire drainage system and the aerator. Make sure not to throw anything away because we're going to need all of this to get the right sizes for replacements. Oh. All right, step one is done. We got everything out and now it looks disgusting, but all the bad stuff is gone. Time to take our ass to the hardware store and pick up what we need. All right, guys, we're at a place that I don't normally like to go to. Big orange box, but I gotta do it because I uh, got some things to buy and there's no Lowe's in the area. Ironically enough, I actually used to work at this particular store and I actually used to make out with a girl right behind those sheds over there. Don't tell Ashley. But we're gonna get what we got and get the hell out of here because uh, we're gonna have to finish this job before the sun goes down. To make our bottom shelf, I'm using some half inch plywood that I had lying around as well as a four by four by eight foot post. Make sure to measure twice and cut once, guys. I cannot stress this enough. You don't want to make a wrong measurement, then overcut, and then have to go back to the hardware store for a new piece of wood. It's going to cost you time, it's going to cost you money, and it's just going to piss you off. As you can see, our measurements fit nice and flush. There's no extra space. They fit side to side and front to back exactly how we want them. I'm using one inch screws at all eight secure points. There's not really a need for wood glue in this situation as this is really just a temporary fix. When installing the new aerator, be generous with the plumber's putty, push it down firmly, and tighten it really well on the other side so there's no leaks around the outer edges. For the supply lines, Teflon tape is a must on every thread you're installing. It's a good idea to hand tighten everything before you use your clamp wrenches so you don't strip those threads. Most kitchen sinks are 3 8 inch compression, but just the same, make sure that your supply lines fit your supply valves. Last thing to install is the drainage system. I'm using a one and a half inch complete repair kit with a flexible hose. Each contact point comes with its own nut and washer. Make sure to install this about an inch and a half to two inches above the smaller pipe so you don't get leaks. Last thing is make sure that the drainage system is moving downwards as much as possible so that you don't get any water stuck anywhere. You tell me if it breaks or not. I got you. Well, you're inspecting my work? No. <laughs> <laughs> Turn it on. There's no water pressure yet. Oh, there it goes. Alright. Oh, look at this. That's fine. Both sides. Both sides. No water sides. underneath. No leaks. Alright guys, there's no water underneath. We're in. We're good. What? We can wash some dishes again. Yes. Oh. Yeah, I'm use a bucket. This video is not about fixing a sink actually. It's about visiting and calling your grandma. Yeah. So after this, go. I want you guys all to call your grandmas. Love you. <laughs> Love you too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right guys, we're home, it's late, we're tired, Robin's cranky, my hands hurt, but I wanted to take a minute and explain to you guys actually where I learned how to fix plumbing issues. It was my senior year in high school actually. I was renting a room from this guy who was a friend of our family's. I was already living out on my own at the time. And he thought that it would be a good idea to make me learn basically by myself. So he was a plumber and he gave me the exact same three tools that I use today. Crescent wrench, the two clamp wrenches, that's it. He gave me that, he told me what the problem was, he showed me the bag of new parts, and then he left me alone. Now, could I have asked him for help? Yes, of course. But he wanted me to figure it out on my own and I think he was trying to teach me self-reliance. Uh, and it worked, I guess, because I've never really had to ask a plumber to fix anything in my house since. 
So I'm really appreciative of that. And I don't tell you guys this story for you to feel bad for me or anything like that. It's more so because I know not everybody has the opportunity to have a father figure around or a older sibling or an uncle or a dad or whatever. And I'm telling you, you don't really need that. What you need to do is just keep your eyes open for opportunities to learn. If you see somebody who seems like they know what they're talking about, they're giving you information that you find valuable, learn, listen, pay attention, make that information your own and then pass it on to somebody else. That's what I'm trying to do with this channel. And I hope you guys learned something today. I really do. If you stuck around this long, I really appreciate it. Please like and subscribe because I want to continue to do this. I want to keep teaching things. Next week's going to be a lot more fun. I'm going to teach you guys something and it's going to be a little spicy. That's all I'm going to say. But uh, we're out of here. We're going to get some sleep. And we'll see you guys next week on Life Skills. Come on, Robert. Come on, Bobby. I know you're tired.